The Tata Nano continues in a long line of inexpensive people's cars designed to push car usage to the masses. Many of these cars succeeded and fueled both car ownership and in many cases the standard of living. When the Nano was launched it was touted as a car that would change India, but in 10 years production stopped with just 300,000 sold. How did a car designed to move Indians from their motorcycles into a comfortable four-seat car fail? And what's Tata's future strategy for an entry-level car? This is the Tata Nano story. Tata is a giant 150-year-old Indian company that makes everything from tea to buses. They started making cars in 1954 when they entered into a joint venture with Daimler-Benz. The car division continued to grow, creating the first Indian designed and built car, the Indica, in 1998, with a little help from an Italian design house. They would purchase Jaguar Land Rover in 2008, and in 2005 they decided to make a light truck to take on auto rickshaws or tuk-tuks. These are used everywhere in India as taxis, light vans and personal transportation, but a little more than motorcycles with three wheels and a roof. Tata's new Ace would take on Japanese K-car microvans made in India. The Ace was an immediate hit and Tata started thinking about replicating the success with an affordable car. For many people in India their family transport is a motorcycle and many can get creative with how many you can fit on it. The Indian economy was beginning to take off after years of slow growth, which meant more people with the money to trade up to a car. Tata set their sights firmly on the Suzuki Alto, produced in collaboration with Indian company Maruti, that was the best-selling car in India, which by 2008 would sell over a million cars. They assembled a young team, mostly aged between 25 and 30, and headed by Garesh Wag, who'd led the team that created the Ace truck. They were given three goals. The car, dubbed the Nano, would have to be inexpensive to manufacture, it would have to conform to current and upcoming regulations, and it would have to meet aggressive fuel consumption and performance targets. The initial design was not much more than a quadricycle with an engine, a car boiled down to its essential elements. Bars replaced doors and it had plastic flaps to keep out the rain. They presented the concept to management who balked at the car's simplicity. The team were told to go back to the drawing board and make something more resembling a car. But with the price of steel doubling in four years, making an affordable car would be more challenging than ever. They persevered and with the help of the Italian design house that had styled the Indica, produced a compact four-seater only a little bigger than the 1950s Fiat 500, with a class-leading four-meter turning circle. Being taller than the Fiat 500, it sat four in comfort, allowing even six-footers to get in and out easily. Tata's chairman, Ratan Tata, lauded the new car to the press. When pushed for how much it was going to cost, he threw out a figure, 1 lakh. A lakh is 100,000 rupees, or about £1,300. That's a great soundbite and makes a great headline, so the press ran with it, and the Nano quickly became touted as the 1 lakh car. This was a very aggressive price for a new car. Rather than walking it back, Tata decided to take the price as a challenge. Could they really make a 1 lakh car? As a Tata executive said after the car was launched, if you want to innovate, take a bold challenge, make a public announcement, and it will happen. Those are fine words, but it will happen is wishful thinking. There are a lot of steps between having an idea and executing a successful product. Someone should maybe have told him about Google Glass, 3D TVs or Windows Vista. The company knew they would have to be aggressive about cost cutting. After the body had been designed it was reworked to reduce the number of fasteners. This reduced weight, simplified construction and lowered the production cost. The base model would only have one door mirror, one door lock, one wiper blade, three lug nuts on each wheel instead of the usual four or five, and no fuel filler cap. You had to open the bonnet to fill it up. All in the name of providing a car everyone could afford. 
It didn't even have power locks, although, to quote a Jasper Carrot joke about the 2CV, it didn't matter as you could reach all four doors from the driver's seat. The engine was also minimal. The team wanted to buy an off-the-shelf engine, but none met their requirements, so they decided to build their own. To save weight, it was manufactured from aluminium, making it less than 600 kilograms. The initial two-cylinder 540cc engine lacked power, so the capacity was increased not once, but twice, to 624cc, producing 35 horsepower and giving the car a top speed of 65 miles an hour and great fuel economy. The wheels might have looked tiny, but at 30 centimetres they were the same size as those found on earlier Maruti Suzukis, which stood up to the punishment of Indian roads. Tata worked with various partners to produce components such as GKN for the drive shaft and RAN Group for the steering. Just like they challenged themselves to cut costs, they pushed their suppliers to do the same. With the Nano starting to attain the status of a national car project, some suppliers decided to take little or no profit from the venture as a sense of national pride. The new car was launched with a big splash at the Auto Expo in New Delhi in January 2008. The Nano really was a stripped back car. Inside there was a speedometer and a steering wheel, and not much else. The mid-level CX model included air conditioning and a heater, power brakes, tinted glass, a rear parcel shelf, uprated seat fabric and more exterior colour options. The top of the range LX model got all of this plus a passenger side door lock, central locking, electric windows, front and rear fog lights, the all important cup holders and, something of a surprise for a car with a top speed of just 65 miles an hour, a sporty rear spoiler. Tata projected annual sales of 250,000 cars and the press predicted the Nano would have a major impact on the Indian car market. This would be India's Beetle, Mini, 2CV, Corolla, Model T or Fiat 500 and Tata themselves would lord the Nano as the people's car. There was talk of exporting this affordable world car to Africa, Latin America and Southeast Asia or even building factories there to support it. The new car would be built in a new factory in Singa, West Bengal, in one of the most easterly parts of India. It was a poor agricultural area of the country and the government felt industrialisation would help raise living standards. Land was purchased to build the factory, but there was a big backlash from the local population. Local elected officials had promised to give land to locals to farm, so building a factory on this land was the opposite of what they wanted. After much protesting, Tata was forced to abandon the West Bengal factory and at the last minute switched to building a factory in Sandat, Gujarat on the opposite side of the country. With the Nano being launched at the start of 2008 and the West Bengal factory problem blowing up the following summer, Nano production was put on the back foot, especially as monsoon floods delayed the new factory and it would take until the following summer until limited production could begin. Despite this, expectations for the new car were high and Tata planned to increase production capacity to 350,000 cars per year by 2010. In the run-up to the Nano's launch, used car prices fell as much as 30% and sales of the Maruti Suzuki Alto fell 20%. Tata's advertising focused heavily on the benefits the Nano offered over a motorcycle. When pre-orders opened up, Tata got over 200,000 customers paying a small deposit, with the Nano website getting 1 million hits every day. But it was becoming clear that there was a big gulf between making a public announcement and it will happen. Although Tata allowed the first 100,000 cars to be sold for 1 lakh, prices couldn't remain that low. The car's price would soon rise 78% to around £2,300. That might sound like it was still a good deal, but the Maruti 800 was only 16% more, meaning this was hardly the game-changing car Tata had originally proposed. And with the Nano being almost four times the price of a motorcycle, it was hardly the vehicle that would persuade the masses to move from two wheels to four. In the cold light of day, it was clear why making a car for double the price of a motorcycle was impossible. Motorcycles don't need the same crash structures, they don't need to meet the same emission standards that require things like fuel injection, and of course a car that holds four in comfort is made up of way more physical stuff than a motorcycle, 
and that stuff costs money. Production ramp up issues at the new factory weren't helping things either. Of the 200,000 pre orders, only 30,000 received their cars nine months after the first was delivered, and many were cancelling their orders. And after all that hype, the first reviews weren't stellar. With the new factory, it was maybe inevitable, but the car suffered from poor quality and fit and finish issues. This added to people's feeling that rather than being a great price car, it was simply a cheap car. It felt cheap, and to add insult to injury, it wasn't that cheap either. It didn't even have an opening rear, meaning luggage had to be passed through the car. It soon got the reputation as a poor person's car, and customers flocked to nearly new, real cars that held more prestige. Another issue Tata faced was their ability to sell into the rural markets that they were focused on. Most Tata dealerships were in urban areas, so it was hard for Tata to sell its car to its target market. They would work to open more dealerships in rural areas, and in 2010 would create the Super Drive event where three cars, bedecked in the colours of the Indian flag, would tour India drumming up interest. Tata would take some heart from the Nano winning Indian Car of the Year, but it quickly became clear that it wasn't rural customers buying, but urban customers looking for a second car. It seems Tata was in a state of denial, as by 2010 they were still talking of sales of 350,000 a year, but reality was getting in the way. After almost two years, only 100,000 cars had been sold, despite car sales in India booming 22%. Still hoping for a sales boom once production had fully ramped up, Tata took the Nano to Europe and showed off the Europa concept, pitching it as a micro city car. Five years later, Tata was still hoping to launch the car in Europe and went through NCAP safety testing, but hopes were dashed when the car received a zero star rating, far from the four stars that the company was hoping for. Instead of good news, there was more bad news. Two nanos caught fire, which caused unwanted publicity. Both fires weren't problems with the nano itself. It was a ruptured fuel line and a foreign object on the exhaust. But Tata would extend the nano's warranty from 18 months to 4 years to quell worries. Sales didn't improve in subsequent years, even though ride and handling was improved by 2012. Tata had investigated alternate fuel sources to reduce the total cost of ownership that would make the car more competitive. The first study had started even before the Nano had launched, running the car on compressed air with the help of French firm Motor Development International. There was a hope the car could go 120 miles before needing to be refilled, but both companies could never get it to work well enough to bring it to the market. Tata investigated an electric version of the car in 2010 using super polymer lithium ion batteries to give it a 100 mile range, but while the proposal was shown at the Geneva Motor Show, this was also abandoned, likely because of the prohibitive cost in India and the fact that the Nano hadn't been launched in countries that could afford those expensive batteries. Tata tried again in 2013, releasing a bi-fuel version of the Nano that could run on both petrol and compressed natural gas, or CNG. It was launched in areas that already had CNG stations, and was available at a small premium over the regular Nano. But with gas storage in the boot, luggage space, already pretty cramped, was further compromised. Sales were a fraction of what Tata had expected, only reaching 4,000 on a good month. Only 250,000 cars had been sold in the first six years. That's how much Tata was expected to sell in just the first year. Tata was losing money, and so were its suppliers, some who had planned to take little or no profit in this patriotic endeavour to get India moving. To drum up sales, the special Nano Twist model appeared in 2014 with power assisted steering, and GA Motorsports made a special Super Nano with a 230 horsepower engine just to show what this plucky little car could do. Tata released the first major update in 2015 with the cool sounding name of the Gen X Nano. The big change was at last an opening boot, which also gave easier access to the engine, but the car also got a 5-speed automated manual gearbox with a sport option, an updated styling. And although the price still wasn't 1 lakh, it wasn't any more than the previous generation. 
but underneath the body was improved with a better frontal crash structure and moving the radiator to the front helped with weight distribution. The Nano also became more practical with a 24 litre tank instead of the previous 15 litre one, giving a driving range of over 350 miles. To help customers move up from their motorcycles to the Nano, Tata worked with financial companies to offer competitive loans. Unable to admit defeat in their national car project, the Nano kept being sold for much longer than it should. Towards the end, only a handful of cars would be produced every month. But eventually, even Tata had to face reality and production ended in 2018 after selling less than 300,000 cars. The Tiago took over as Tata's most inexpensive car. Launched in 2016, but at almost double the price of the Nano, Tata is now ceding the entry-level market to its competition. The Nano was a noble project to improve the lives of millions of Indians and further democratising transport. But serious mistakes were made, both in setting expectations that couldn't be met and by delivering a product that was little better than the competition. This caused a backlash that meant the car was never given another chance to succeed after the initial public disappointment. But the core problem is the Nano didn't solve the problem it set out to fix. The average Indian couldn't afford a car that was four times the price of a motorcycle. But the Indian economy continues to improve slowly year on year, which means living standards continue to improve. More can afford more necessities and creature comforts, and yes, fewer children each year have to balance precariously on motorcycle seats between their parents. Creating the first Indian designed and built car, the Indica in 1998, with a little help from its Italian design. And apparently I finished my walk. They were given three goals. The car, dubbed the Nano, would lap blah 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 blah. It would have to conform to current and upcoming regulations, and it would have to meet aggressive fuel consumption and perform non targets. They persevered, and with the help of the Italian design house that had yeah. A lakh is a hundred thousand rupees, or about a th about a third. Tata was essentially boiling a. That's, I've, I've already I've said that before. I can't say it again. They were the same size as those found on earlier Maruti Suzukis, which stood up to the punishment of running out of air. Just like they challenged themselves to cut costs, challenged myself to try and bloody speak. The new car was launched with a big splash at the Auto Expo in New Delhi in January 1998. Probably not 1998. It was a poor agricultural area of the country and the government felt industrialisation would help raise living standards. And I put the wrong emphasis on the wrong word. Meaning this was hardly the game-changing car Tata had originally promised. I, I was gonna say promised and the word is proposed. <laughs> 